Good morning, everyone. Um, it's been a joy to be here celebrating International Sunday. Uh, my wife and I have been coming to River Cross for a few years. And just want to say that River Cross really has been um, a family away um, for us, especially since we have a lot of extended family away in India. River Cross has really helped us to feel the family of God here and never feel alone or isolated. And we're really, really grateful um, for this church and to be part of it. Um, when Pastor Rob asked me to speak today for International Sunday, I'm not going to lie, I was a little hesitant. Um, I'm really used to speaking to a much smaller crowd at work um, in an office setting, maybe four to five people, and really talking about numbers. So this was definitely out of my comfort zone. So that being said, I thank you so much for the grace <laughs> that you're going to bear with me while I share what God has put on my heart for you today. Thinking about today um, and thinking about all the wonderful different cultures represented today and the different countries today, I felt like God really put on my heart to speak about missions and um, what it means to be mission-minded and mission-oriented. It really got me thinking about what do people think of you about missions? I understand that missions may look different for a lot of people. For some people, it might take you to a different part of the world on a rescue mission for those being human trafficked. However, for some, it might be that your mission field is your neighborhood or your job. The interesting thing is that when it comes to talking about missions, some people in the church um, associate or we sometimes put more emphasis on the topic uh, related to missionaries who God has called to leave their jobs and current geographical locations to go to a remote part of the world and speak the gospel. Don't get me wrong, this is very important and it is a part of missions. Um, for example, just to share my personal story, my great-grandparents from my mother's side um, were originally Hindus who were um, converted or talked to about Jesus by missionaries who went away to India um, to talk to them. So it is very important. However, the only thing I'd like to add to that is that I feel like missions is not just limited to a few people, not to missionaries, not to the elders of your church, um, not to a select few. It is for all of us to be mission-minded. If you read Matthew 28, it says, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. So if we read this, the Great Commission, we can clearly see that the call is to each one of us to reach out, not to a few people, but to everyone. Now, whether you work full-time, whether you work part-time, whether you're a student, whether you're fully employed, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a clerk, I believe and I want to challenge you to think about yourself as a full-time missionary called to make disciples as you go along your daily life. And it really starts with a focus shift on others that God has put in your life. In fact, I would encourage you today to reflect on your neighborhood, your workplace, your school, um, and to think about it as a mission field. I do believe there's a reason for where God has placed each one of us, and whether it be our neighborhood or um, work or school, you don't have to hop on a plane to find the lost. I remember when I arrived in Canada in 2001, we first moved to Toronto because when you come to Canada, you only know about Toronto and Vancouver. And so, naturally, my dad um, decided to move us all to Toronto. 
I settled there really well, um, went to school, I enjoyed Toronto, and then um, my dad said, we're moving to New Brunswick a year later. I talked to my friends at school that I made and they scared me. They're, this is 2001. They were like, New Brunswick, are you sure? Are you? And they, they really, really mentioned that, you know, you're going to have a hard time, it's going to be tough, people, uh, it's very harsh climate, people are not friendly, it was a very, um, you know, sc scary experience. That being said, on top of that, um, it was also a much smaller place. It wasn't St. John, it wasn't Fredericton, it wasn't Moncton. It was a small French village, about 5,000 people at that time, a place called Trakadi Shaila, which is near Miramichi. For those who don't know, it's very French. You need to know French. We did not. Um, and it's a very small village. My dad had got an engineering post uh, in a city nearby, and so that's why we were moving. Later, I talked to my dad about it and I asked him, you know, was this like more of a career move? And he said, he and my mom always used to pray about it and they mentioned that they didn't really think of it as a career move. Yes, God opened the door, they trusted God, but they believe that God takes you to different places as your mission field. When we arrived in Trakity, it was pretty cold. It was like minus 30, there was a snowstorm. And the company that my dad booked us put a small chalet. And we could hear the wind rustling. And I was like, Lord, why? Where have you brought us? Um, that being said, um, my parents really taught me about being mission-minded, even in Trakity. Our house was always open. Um, there would be neighbors coming in. Um, there would be people teaching us a lot about Canadian lifestyle, which was really, really helpful. And there was a lot of relationships built on that. These relationships was what my dad and mom used to talk about their faith, to share God's love, and to encourage people um, during these times in tragedy. So when my dad mentioned Mission Field, that's what I thought. I, I felt that no matter where God takes you, whether it's your job, career, whether it's to a new country, there's a purpose for you in each and every situation. And that's my challenge for you today. I'd like to take it a step, one, a step further and say that when you're able to look at the workplace, your office, your job, at the workplace as a mission field, it also changes your perception of your current situation. I understand that we have a job we particularly might not like. There are some of us who do, and, and I understand there might be tough situations, a hard manager, but if we change our perspective to thinking that God has put us in this job, in this workplace for a particular reason, it changes how we look at things. For example, in, your, in my workplace, I've had quite a few new people move in from different countries, going through a lot of different things, and some of them are going through hard circumstances. Taking the time to get to know them, even though you're in your job, even though they're a colleague, taking time to um, get to know them outside of the office, pray for them, invite them home to a meal, makes a big difference. And that's the focus that we should all have, being mission-minded. I believe forming these relationships is the first step of showing God's love. Even if it's in your school. I, believe, I remember when I went to university here in uh, Fredericton. It was a time where you were away from your, fam your church family, your friends, and you have a lot of pressure, peer pressure. Um, I lived on campus at UMB um, on a house called Aiken House, which was probably not known for the best reputation in terms of studying. Um, and there was a lot of pressure. I remember a friend, a student of mine, whose father had given her his beat down uh, minivan. And she would come to each and every uh, residence and pick us up to go to university, go to campus. 
this was her mission field. This was her calling. I am so grateful that she took us. Even though there were a lot of days we prayed, there was sometimes a seatbelt would not work. Sometimes we felt like the seat was missing or shaking. But it got us to church, and we were really grateful for that. Um, that was the, her mission field, and that was um, her calling. And it really helped me and my friends to have a firm foundation in university where there's a lot of pressure. If we look around today, we can see another interesting thing happening within our city, uh, within our country. God is bringing people from different nations into our country, especially from nations that are yet unreached. We have people from India, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Pakistan, China, Syria, many African nations and South American nations to name a few. Here, God is presenting us with a unique opportunity to proclaim the gospel of all nations right here in St. John. So how do we go about intentionally being mission-minded every day? I really believe that it's a focus every day. Have you ever gone through your day where God has ever so gently tucked at your heart? Maybe it's connecting with a family member going through a hard time, a single mom in your neighborhood, or a senior struggling to juggle everything that life has thrown at them, or a co-worker going through a hard time. If you really think about it, if you really look around your community, you will find people who are going through different circumstances, who are going through life, and who need God's love and grace and encouragement. There are many who are coming to Canada because of unfavorable situation in their country. And when they come to the country, they are seeking a community that will be supportive, that will be compassionate, and that will lovingly respond to their needs, be it physical or emotional or spiritual. So really mission-minded, it's not something new, it's something that we all do, but just to encourage you, I feel like it really boils down to love. If you read Matthew 22, verse 37, it says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. He doesn't say love your fellow Christians. He says love your neighbor. He doesn't ask you to first evaluate your neighbor's belief or social standing. It doesn't say to because your neighbor hurt you. He says just love. Love your neighbor regardless. You see, for me, it's easy especially for me, it's easy to fellowship with my life group, with my church family. I enjoy it. I get fulfilled from it. It's usually the hard part is fellowshipping or stepping out of my comfort zone to someone who's a stranger, maybe someone who's hurt me, um, a neighbor who's been giving a hard time over every park, or you know, an office manager who's been micromanaging. You know, sometimes those are the more tough situations where we have to refocus and be mission-minded. It takes time and intention to go out of your comfort zone and invest in a relationship, even if you've been hurt. But if you read Luke 6:28, it says, Bless those who hurt you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Context is this. Jesus is speaking to the disciples. They have been newly recruited, and he's saying to them, this is what it means to follow me. I think having this mindset is crucial for mission work. It's not easy to put us out, and it puts us out of our comfort zone. And for some of us, the response is, Lord, you don't know what they've done to me, what they've said, how rude they've been. Isn't there someone better than me to talk to them? And it really comes down to what our purpose of life is here. We spend our limited time here to intentionally fulfill God's purpose. And really, this could start with the simplest of acts. It could start with smiling at that neighbor 
who's constantly um, criticizing you. Every time you walk by, just giving a small smile. Next step could be in, um, helping them out if you see them in the wintertime shoveling alone, going over and helping them. And the third step is inviting them over to your house, keeping an open house, inviting them for a meal. It's funny how these small things can make a huge difference in creating a relationship with strangers. I'll give you an example. It's more of a personal example. Um, and it's regarding our neighbor. Um, so there was a time where my wife's parents were down from India and they had just parked the car um, just in front of our house. Um, and our neighbor, um, which we didn't know at the time, is known for backing her car into any of the cars parked on the street opposite our house. Um, we never knew that at the time, so I get a call at the office and my wife's dad is like, someone bumped into the car. And I'm like, oh no. So um, the neighbor comes over and she's so, it was her daughter and she's so um, flustered. She's looking for confrontation, even though it's her fault, she's saying, you know, this happened once before with the previous owners. We, we would have to go to law to settle it, to court to settle this. Um, and Romy's dad, and it was a teaching moment for me. Romy's dad look, looks at her and says, it's okay. How is your daughter? Is she okay? Um, and that kind of throws her off. She's up here in the front door looking for a confrontation and just asking her if her daughter is okay throws her off. And he tells her, don't worry, it's just a door. It's an old car. We can figure it out later. It doesn't matter. And that just threw her off. On top of that, my wife's parents, being my wife's parents, create, uh, make um, Indian desserts and <laughs> drop it off at the neighbor's house who hit our car. And this is all just to show that when you're mission-minded, it's really about showing God's love, God's care. It's really about building relationships. Needless to say, we have a very good relationship with our neighbor, and things have um, changed. But it really takes that one step. I'd like to encourage you and close with this encouragement that Jesus did not die for people for a few nations. Jesus died for people group, for every language group, for every nation. And that's what we read in Revelations 5, um, 9 to 10. It says, they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain by your blood and ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on the earth. It is amazing to see a small glimpse of this future here in Vera Cross Church. When we look around today in International Sunday, we see so many different cultures represented today. I just wonder like, what it will be like in heaven. And I'm so grateful that even though we are all from different backgrounds, uh, different economic backgrounds, different culture backgrounds, we're all one. We're all family together in Christ. May God continue to use us to make disciples of all nations. Thank you.